bone. Come on. Is that a bone? Come on. Come on. Is that a bone? Look at this. Come on. Come on, Charlie. Charlie. Come on, you know you want it. Come on. Charlie, come on. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, good boy. It's uh, kind of tricky to find your way through there. But. Just making the best out of what's going on right now. What the best is that. <laughs> so gorgeous. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. A 31 foot Greyhawk. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I think it is a family mobile is because there are seat belts for two, four, right six. on Apache! Right on Apache! There's no safety in the shadows. Soon the light will drive out the old ghost. Sometimes you gotta raise your voice. For the broken ones who never had a choice. Can we just... Okay. Let's try to be a little Okay. How's it going, Charlie? You ready? Charlie ready? Charlie, no, not there. Ah! Okay. Really? Yeah. Assuming that this is the beginning of the next classy episode where we're going to go to Lost Dutchman. We're also going to provide a little review and kind of our experience, how this experience is going, that kind of stuff. I'm excited to see Lost Dutchman. I'm excited to go hiking. Uh, right now we've got a GoPro in the Subaru just so that I can yeah. see the steering wheel turn and that kind of stuff. I don't know if that would be kind of cool to see. How do you get this to go up? There we go. Okay. Charlie so, was waiting for you guys, by the way. Drive. Grab a seat. Parking brake. Oh, whoa, wait, before you do that. What? Oh, Let's yeah, turn good. On. Turn on the camera. Trish, you ready? Ready, Freddy. Oh, the TPMS system is also not up. Oh yeah, where is the TPMS system? It's in the towels in the bathroom. We could not figure out how to turn it off, tonight. and it would not. I be couldn't quiet. figure out how to turn it off either. Okay, what I'm waiting for here is okay. We got one arm, and we need the other. Arm. I th I say go right to extend it. Hey, on. let's not get behind on the AC. Let's keep that AC pumping. Keep that okay? AC going. Yeah. All right, where are we going to next, Ed? Lost Dutchman. Oh no, we're gonna go across the street and we're gonna get Charlie Longley. We're gonna get some plastic silverware so that we can eat lunch. It's gonna be a big day. Good <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this fun, Charlie? Isn't this fun? Yes, I'll turn up the air conditioning. Would that be better? Oh, isn't that nice? Come here, Charlie. Charlie, look, I have something for you. And then you can hold it here, too. And okay. then free to flex. Real. Yeah. It sure is pretty. Those mountains are sure gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah. I think we're okay. Now that is called setting a good example right there. just gonna go slow. How are we looking? Oh, we're looking great, Dad. It's like that car was meant oh. to off-road. Yeah, oh, baby, how about? Yeah. yeah! Man, that was awesome. Woo! Yeah, even Charlie's like, whoa! So, Sorry about it, I didn't want to Trish that. says to me, hey, you going the right way? I'm like, yeah. Got the directions up right there. She says, well, my directions say you're gonna make a U-turn. And I zoomed out and I'm like, yeah, so do mine. So we've been going down the 77 the wrong way. I don't know how that happened. I've been following directions. But the thing is, we just don't have the same setup. Like normally our phone is hooked into CarPlay and CarPlay's talking, my phone died. I don't know. We're, we are out of sorts, I'll tell you that.
no egg hunts, no egg tosses. <laughs> Is that like a was that like a permanent sign? No, it was for Easter. But, oh, okay. <laughs> but it was like semi permanent. Okay, what's that? Oh wait, was that my turn? Or, wait, slow, 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 slow. Oh yeah. Caleb's saying we don't have water electric. Let's go verify that. Super bonus. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. Um, not such a bonus. We're not here in our rig with all of our fancy batteries because I don't think there's electric. Dude, that's a problem. If it's a problem none. if there's no electric. This can be short lived. <laughs> this is the classy short lived trip. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's cool. What's that right there? It's an old Ford. Oh, that's a Ford? Uh huh. Ford. Right. So I don't know this for sure, but it just seems like from our little drive around here that we're on the only loop that doesn't have water and electric. I'm not exactly sure why I didn't know it didn't have water and electric when I booked the site, but normally that wouldn't be a problem for us in the Airstream. But and maybe it's not if we look at generator hours because we can charge our laptops and we're gonna go get water, so it's not a problem. But definitely an oversight on my well, part. That is, I just, that's nice, huh? That's cool. Seriously, off. Hey there. Well, we just checked into 34. I did not know when I made the reservation that it was not water and electric. That's fine. I'm just wondering if anyone has canceled. No, but I'd suggest going online if you're going to be here more days. There might be some open tomorrow. Okay. So maybe we can move tomorrow. Yeah. So you think just, well, I didn't think you could make a reservation the same day though. Today. Oh, make it today for tomorrow. Yeah. And then we'll just move. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. All right, thank yes. you. Okay. That, that's city water. Yeah, this is kind of like the Nautilus system where it's got one connection point. Okay. And then you turn these dials to a certain way to fill oh, okay. or city or whatnot. So when I first plugged it in, it was on city, which is why the sink ran. And then when I moved it to city fill, then it started filling the tank. So now it's filling the tank. And by the way, this is one of those, I'm violating one of my rules, which is I never fill if the freshwater spigot, what's that sign say? potable water. If the fresh water is close to the sewer, like within enough to like use this to rinse out, I tend not to use it. But a couple things. One is, A, I have no choice. B, we're <laughs> filling the tank and we and we brought our own drinking water. And and um, you have to use your own hose. And C, it's my own hose. Like for instance, like this, like see sometimes, sometimes these right here are, are the potable water. And so, even though it says potable water, like I didn't see that sign, people grab the potable water and they're like, oh, I'm just gonna clean my sewer hose. And they start cleaning their sewer hose. This, this is separate in that it's, it's our own hose. So if we had our own rig, I've got a little bottle of bleach and sometimes I'll just spray with bleach and stuff like that. But anyway, what are you gonna do? Hit auto level, stabilizers went down, it did its little thing, it says unable to finish. And auto level does this. So I have to enter to acknowledge. Now I'm gonna retract. Uh, this does it from time to time if the RV is not within enough, how do I know, is the right word? Like within enough the right Rating parameters, yeah. then it won't. It won't continue to do it. So, jacks down. Retract. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna move over a little bit because I think we're a little too far this way for auto level to work and then try again. It's, I don't know, it's just, it's just annoying to sleep just a little off. And normally I wouldn't worry about it if we're only here for a night or two, but um, because we already don't have water and electric, because we're already a little bit irritable, I don't want to be like not level two. Oh, Charlie, what are you doing? Hi. Hello. Cheers. Cheers. You know, we were so focused on making a checklist and not checking the checklist. 
That's why we're drinking red wine out of plastic cups right now. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think that we've come this up with a pretty good to checklist. The, to the overall feel of, it the, does. of the trip. It's perfect. <laughs> Adventure time. It goes it's perfect. really well. But anyhow, we have really, I think, we've come up with a good list. It's not... Wait, what is he doing? He's trying Charlie, to... Charlie, out of the bushes. Something. Get out of there. It's not going to be universal for everybody, but I think it's a good start for going out for a few days. Okay, so back. you can get that at keepyourdaydream.com forward slash checklist mm. what should we call it camping what should we call it? what are you looking at me like that for <laughs> get your shinizzle together <laughs> hey i just uh sent a video message to kent Wilson, you know? Um, yes. Zion? Our, that he was, was our, such a fun time. He was our, our our hiking host. He was our hiking host for Angel's Landing. Anyway, I just saw on the Insiders page that he had been here mm -hmm. with Ginger. And so I sent him a video message and he replied. The trail I would take is called Flatiron and it goes up to the top of that, which I was not able to do when I was there last time. It goes to the top of Lost Dutchman. There's also some trails that just go across the face of Lost Dutchman, which were still pretty good, but look for the information on Flatiron. I think that's the one. Take a picture of like the blue, like Wait, what? empty space. Can you take a picture of like this Can I get a photo with empty blue space? really tasty really good I've got the goods here got this going I need to cut that bread with this tiny little knife <laughs> <laughs> and um, get it on the grill so we can toast it mm. with some heirloom tomatoes on it have a little brie cheese to melt on it got this it's good I gotta get going I'm gonna get these warm, and then I'm gonna melt some for you. No way. That, and you got the tomatoes, and we have those. Okay. Oh, this looks awesome, Trish. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's great. You're welcome. <laughs> I wash my hands. Get your I don't trust your pinkies. I just wash my hand. Or I touch, just touch. Charlie, that mouse doesn't want to play. That mouse right now is scared for his life. I know you just want to play with it. But Charlie. Charlie. You gotta leave that mouse alone, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Charlie. Charlie, come here. Come on. You cannot eat that mouse. Okay? Come over here. Okay, there we go. We're started. Let's go. All right, if we're going to find this Dutchman, <laughs> we're going to need to spread out. If you go over here to Trail 53, Trish, I'm going to take Trail 58. We're going to get more people. We're going to find we're going to find this Dutchman. Good morning now, little singing bird. It's been a while since your song's been heard. I've got your coffee and your breakfast made. These are just starting to blossom. So these are going to turn bright orange. Okay, the Akatu reminds me of being like scuba diving. It kind of looks like seaweed. It flows in the yeah. air. It blossoms from like April, maybe the end of March, all the way to the beginning of June. That's when the desert comes alive. Mm -hmm. Big, beautiful white flowers on saguaros. These really, these will all turn bright orange or pink at the top. Beautiful flowers. So this is the well, best. Well, this is a bright orange, and I think they're beautiful. Like like yeah. right now, the, the fact that they're so green, yeah. they almost look like those little felt clean, like a little pipe cleaner. Yes, but don't get too close. They too have thorns. Yes. This is the most treacherous environment ever. Yes. Here's the skeleton of them. Oh boy. So underneath all that green, this is what's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so treacherous. And then you were talking about when they're 
the choya, the jumping cactus yes. is bright, this is it. Yeah. So this is what pops off. And look, you can see, this is how it replants itself. It breaks off and then flies away. Yeah. But these are what come out and just, <laughs> it's like Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you tell me about the time back in Kathmandu When they stole your purse, had to sell your shoes Then you met a monk who had nothing left to lose He was born in Mississippi at the bottom of the blues Oh, that time that you set out, slay the dragon in the woods Turns out he's not so bad, just a little misunderstood On the curve of the earth, in the haze of the good wine Tell me, little bird was I ever on your mind? <laughs> All right, we thought we would have a quick conversation about rattlesnakes because we get a fair amount of emails from people out east. They're like, I'm coming out to the west, going to the Grand Canyon, coming out to this area. Very scared about rattlesnakes. Oh, okay. So, rattlesnakes, not as many as you'd think, but they are here. They love the warm rocks. So yeah. normally you'll find them hanging out on a nice warm rock or they'll be tucked in bushes because their job is to find food. Yeah. So they're looking for mice, they're pretty quiet, and if they're rattling, something's up. It pretty much means like stay away, and if they're coiled, that means like I'm they ready can. to, I'm ready to, you know, like attack. But when they're all strut, strung out, which is, if you were to come across one on a hike, it would probably be all strung out and just crossing the trail. And I come across them from time to time, and I just kind of wait, and then I just kind of skirt around them. It's usually no big deal. Okay, however, one time I was hiking, mm -hmm. and there was this mouse, and it ran out in front of my friend <laughs> yeah. and I. Okay, this mouse goes, and we were like, oh, and we jumped back, both of us jumped uh -huh. back. Uh -huh. Right afterwards was a snake on his hind part of his thing, going like this, running across the trail. Yeah. The mouse jumps in a bush. He gets even higher. Didn't even know it was possible. You're certainly not helping He's this situation. He's looking down in the bush <laughs> and dives in the bush and gets the mouse. Yes. But I tell you that not to totally scare you, even though I have goosebumps on my legs just thinking about it, mm -hmm. is that they're after mice. Yes. So if you're not digging around bushes or and you're staying on the trail, you should be totally fine. You may hear or see stories where people sensationalize rattlesnakes. It's usually because you are in the way of them. They really yeah. don't. They're not. They're not interested. You stay out of the way. They're going to stay out of your way. Mm -hmm. We've lived here all of our life. And be looking around. And just be looking around. It's it's really not a problem. How do you so, do that? How do you, you do that? There you go. Yay! This is a 31 foot gray hawk. Space. <laughs> 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 This is a 31 foot Greyhawk Prestige Class C, sleeps so many people. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is like the ultimate family road trip mobile. So come on in, let me show you around. The reason I think it is a family mobile is because there are seat belts for two, four, six people. There might be more hidden in here that I don't know about, but there are sleeping for those six people as well. So this is the little L shape kitchen not a ton of room but enough to get things going most of the time if you are bringing a big group with you you're going to be outside anyway cooking dinners hanging out sitting and watching the view i mean that is the point so um so anyway we've got a three gas burner here we have an oven we've got microwaves all the little lux items from your house just in miniature version here in your l-shaped kitchen there's storage but what i really like is that there's a dinette and there's a place to sit but I mean like the ultimate kid trip is sitting above the driver I mean we don't live in the 70s anymore so you can't do it while you're driving but um, the idea is that kids can kind of pile up up there there's a big picture window so wherever you are you know you can park your car just your class C so that you can see the big view and it's all right up there this is the high traffic zone <laughs> We've got a pantry over here. We have the fridge and freezer, but then you have the bunks. It's kind of like the tour bus. We've used it as storage because Caleb has really enjoyed that upper bunk area. But you have privacy curtains. There's a little bit of wind flow. Everybody has their own TV. And then we have the bathroom. It's not bad. It's pretty tall. There's, you know, you six footers out there and plus you can fit in there, which is exciting in the RV world, something we look for. These are the challenges of renting a rig. Well, we didn't take a shower, so we didn't bring it. Now we just have to prove that we didn't take a shower. Let me just wipe down this counter for you. You know what? I bring these towels with me 
on every one of these kinds of trips. I bought them to go to New Zealand because they pack really light and tight. Mm -hmm. And Turkish towels they are. They wash really easy. You hang them to dry. They dry really fast. They are not super soft and cuddly. Okay, they never get softer. Someone wrote in and said, Trish, do they ever get softer? No, they don't. <laughs> Your but family they will dry. Complain. Your yes, family they will dry. Complain. Amazing, and um, they're easy to clean. So I always have them. Uh, so that's that. And here you go. Okay, speaking of compact, when you rent a rig, you're going to need to bring your own bedding, your own pillows. One of those big Ziploc bags where you put your, uh, you know, vacuum in and go <laughs> take out all the air. Think about. Uh, getting some of those because you are going to be bringing your own bedding unless there's like a bedding package and the quality of other things that we've rented um i'm going to bring my own bedding so that's just a tip because you may not want to use their bedding package but bring, if you're going on a plane use their bedding package bring your own mattress pad too bring your own mattress pad i really like that okay this is the main storage compartment for this particular class c which is fairly large for carrying this type of stuff. And then otherwise there's these little compartments that go all the way around, which is a lot like our Airstream. And I suppose if you owned a rig like this, you would know exactly what goes into each compartment where you keep your barbecue, where you're gonna keep your chairs and where you're gonna keep your bigger things. But I would say that the storage on this was surprisingly little for a 31 foot class C, which means that the vehicle you tow may be a consideration as to what are you going to tow so that you could use, like in our case, the Subaru Crosstrek, um, that's a fair amount of storage and we can fold the seats down so we can tow or carry other things in that tow vehicle. Okay, I think this is a newbie mistake. This was kind of get hard to get on and I realized that I haven't uh, turned off auto level. So it's probably super high up here in the back and I might need to relocate it to make it a little bit more even because Jake over at Cliffs Welding said, make sure you're always hooking up. Well, he said, make sure you're always towing within like three inches, but as you can tell, it's super high right now. So I'm gonna go disconnect this, turn off auto level or retract the stabilizers and then see how low it is, possibly reposition these two things and then connect again. You wanna hit the brakes and I'll go to see. But I, I was saying, and like, you want me to turn the car off because like, you know, turn it off and put it on AC. You know? Yeah, go see if the brakes are working. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. Is your dog ready? Oh, he's been ready. <laughs> Are you ready? Is mom ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. There goes mom in the truck she loves. Charlie's in there too. <laughs> getting fuel with this was kind of an ordeal. We went to some gas stations off the freeway and then we went to a QT and it was just, and there's somebody blocking the diesel pumps, not that this takes diesel, but we tried to be on the end. So we're sitting in the end, he's not in his car. Other people are trying to get in, it was a total nightmare. So we left there because I didn't think it was safe. Then we found a Chevron and I didn't make the turn sharp enough. Ah! Am I gonna clear it? No, 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 no. Dang it. And I get stuck. I can't make the turn or I'm gonna hit a wall and I can't back up because we were gonna jackknife the, the Subaru and we're in the middle of the intersection. This is like downtown Phoenix. So I back up a little bit more and I see the Subaru tires come over and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna break the Subaru. And then anyway, I, I went a little bit forward and then I went back just a hair because you can't back up, but I backed up like a foot and I made the turn. And then when I come into this pump, because everyone's taking the, the ends here, um, I realized that the the fuel tank is in the back here, so I'm sticking way out, blocking everybody over there, but they can like barely get around. It's... I looked over everything here and it doesn't look like anything was damaged, but man, it was not, it was not, it was a very stressful situation, let me put it that way. I don't know if I like that I can't back up. It's not a problem most of the time until it is a problem, and then it's stressful. And then picking these gas stations, Man, I tell you, there's a lot of people write in and they're like, hey, you still like that SMB 60 gallon gas tank? I'm like, oh yeah, we like it. Probably one of my favorite upgrades on a truck, tow vehicle, is that big gas tank because it means I get to do this less. And it means I have more options of where we go, we have longer range. Of course, you know, we typically go to the truck stops. Uh, and even if you don't even go into the truck lanes, truck stops 
I've been seeing some of the new ones now. They have an RV area. Look, there's RV spots right there, huh? Oh, nice. Oh, that's how they're gonna solve it. Yeah, they're gonna. The new loves are gonna make RV sites. It says you got an eight minute slowdown. You're still on the fastest route. This. This whole <laughs> this, this trip. This trip literally will not let up. Not one bit. It's just it, from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Hi. Are you there? Yeah, hi. Well, we got there and we returned to the RV and then we made a couple wrong turns just trying to get out of the chaos of the traffic. We finally got on the I-17. It was so exciting to be headed home. And then we got a phone call that uh, they couldn't find the RV keys. Well, they're not in the cup holder? They're not in the ignition? It's like, no. They're not in my pocket. I mean, we had to drive there. Found him with all my SD chart. I can't even believe I have to go back there. This place is like in the heart of South Phoenix, which is like, it's traffic, there's trains, you gotta make U-turns to pull in, and I was out. I even said to Caleb, I said, we're out. You're joking. No. So then we had to pull over. So do you have? Yeah, I pulled over and I found the RV keys with all my like USB cords and stuff. I don't know how that happened. So then we had to drive all the way back there uh, to give them the keys. Oh my gosh, Mark. Anyway, we think that we think the trip is over now, but we're not 100% sure. So that's what's going on here. You want water? Here you go. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, what time does it say you're gonna be home? Um, hold on. Let me let me pick this thing up. Okay, I bye. Gotta go. Bye. And by thing, do you think she means phone call? Yeah. Or do you think she found something on the side of the road? She's like, hold on, let me pick this thing up. Uh, well, Caleb wanted to stop at in and out, so but that's that's good. I think I think we can probably get in and out and uh, and get him home by six fifteen. Yeah, may go for a chocolate okay. shake now. Okay. A chocolate shake? Well, after Lent, baby, I've been waiting for this moment. Okay, it's gonna be pleasurable. Okay. I'm not sitting in a car with Caleb <laughs> and a chocolate shake. <laughs>